um, and textures. Uh, so maybe I'll get another texture too. Uh, let's see. I think I wanted to use this one. Let me use this one. So first I'll do the uh, snakeskin one. Um, so uh, for something like this, um, let's see, I'll use my type tool. And then I'll just kind of click and drag where I want type to be. Um, type in drag in here. Uh, let's see. Make this larger. So, um, let's see if I can make it even larger. So I just want to be able to see more texture come through. And I'm just scaling it up with the transform and hit uh, return on that. Um, okay, so this layer here, um, I can go um, onto blending options. And under blending options, um, I can choose, I'm trying to see if I can find a area where I can actually see the type good too. I'll see a piece of it here. Um, so what you can do is actually um, uh, select different channels uh, that you might want to uh, blend um, in. And so if I um, was to uh, drag this underlying layer option here, you can see uh, some of that underlying layer coming through uh, from that dragon layer at the top. Um, if I were to select like a green channel, I would I would see some of the green underlying or the green pixels from the underlying layer coming through, and things like that. So that's a really quick way to make like this text will look like it's actually on the layer beneath it. Uh, so that's one thing you could do um, as a blending uh, option. You can also uh, change the blending modes of the type too. Um, so multiply is not going to work for white, but maybe I can choose like overlay or something like that. That's like barely looks like almost like a sun, um, like, a, like, a, like a, almost like a highlight or something from the sun. Um, so, you know, essentially different layering options can work there too. Um, but the key is uh, that I really wanted to show you was this um, blending um, option here that you can use. Uh, the, uh, another way that you can kind of achieve the same thing um, is basically a little, a, a little bit more time consuming. Um, uh, but it works as well. So um, let me try and do... Um, a new layer and then do some other type here. I'll do like a snake. So oop. let me make this like 500 point. Oh, that's probably going to have to be like 450. So another um, way you can um, get a very similar effect to uh, the word dragon that we had earlier um, was what we would do is uh, take this type layer and control click it and then rasterize the type. Uh, so this really means that now the type is actually non-editable. I can't change this word at all anymore. It's actually um, an image, essentially a rasterized graphic. I can select pieces of it and, and delete it just like any other uh, image in Photoshop, let's say. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is that I can take this uh, background layer here and jump into the channels. Um, actually, I'll turn my snake layer off. And then again, from channels, much like our uh, demo that we had uh, earlier, I can choose a different channel um, that might work for something like this. I'll do the uh, blue one again. Um, maybe I'll uh, duplicate this channel again because I really want to use this just as simply as a selection device. Um, so I'll uh, choose adjustments and levels on my new layer and beef up the white a little bit and then darken the darks. Now I'll load this as a channel, or I'm sorry, I'll load this channel as a selection there and go back to my image, just click the layers that I want to um, uh, delete from. 
um, and then I'll just uh, hit delete on that snake layer and then deselect and so this gives like a little maybe more of a different effect I can undo and then just actually delete maybe a few more times to get more stuff out of it like that uh, so that's another way you can uh, do that um, and then finally um, you can actually um, use your type, just kind of cookie cutter your type out of the, the background, right? So um, on this piece, I'm going to do um, another word. And I'll make this like something like that. So for this, I want it to give the effect that it's actually chopped out. It's so really the same idea. I'm just going to um, rasterize this type. And now this time I'm going to actually uh, do a um, uh, select all, command A, or just in my menu. Um, then with my move tool uh, selected, I'll just kind of nudge uh, with my arrow key. You can see like now the whole layer is actually selected. Um, for the word. I can actually hide this word and now I see my selection. Uh, a little bit more. Um, now hit the wood and then just kind of cookie cutter it out by uh, going to select an inverse. And then delete that. And then this layer I can um, you know give it the, like a really quick a bevel or something. Um, yeah, so the, all of these options too, I would I would uh, jump in and mess around with. Um, let me see if the outer. I don't have to be an inner bevel. And hard. Make it larger. Um, so yeah, all these options, just kind of um, mess around with them really. Um, it's the best way to figure out what works for um, something uh, that you're working on. Um, I can adjust the opacity of the highlight, adjust the opacity of the shadow. Um, the shadow can be set to multiply or um, anything like that. Um, I can change the contour of the of the uh, shading <clears throat> to whatever makes sense or looks best, more unique. <clears throat> um, direction of the shadow, of course, stuff like that. All right.